Do your plans look like this one? Well, if they do, there is a way on how to fix that. And today we are going to look at the Grow Cube from Alacrom. And what's even better, there is an awesome integration for Home Assistant. We'll start in a couple of seconds. A couple of months ago, on social media, I've seen a couple of posts from Blackadder and also Johnny that they have bought and they are testing the Grow Cube. And when Alacro asked me if there is anything I would love to test, I said, sure, I would like to test Grow Cube. The reason for it is not actually the device. Well, yes, of course, the device, but I really wanted to test the integration because from what I've seen on GitHub repository, that's an awesome integration and it really will help you if you're using Home Assistant. So, let's get started. Let's start by talking about device. The device arrives with everything you need to use it. And that means the box itself, which has a tank of 1.5 liters, power supply, plus a lot of extra stuff that can help you grow your garden. While the app and device are designed around four plants maximum, yes, in theory, you can use it even with more plants. But there is a catch with that and I will not be going into much detail. So what's so specific about this device? First, there is a built-in tank for 1.5 liters of water that should be sufficient for around two weeks for the small plants or small pots. But the next feature is also awesome feature because the device is also capable to be a pass-through pump. That means that it will bypass the internal tank and you can hook it up to something larger, 10, 50, 100 liters of water, and then it will use that external tank to pump the water to your flowers, pots, herbs, or whatever. Third is the ability to independently control four outlets. Yes, it can simultaneously pump water to four pots, or it can control each individual one. But how do you control what valves needs to be open and closed? For that, we have fourth feature, and that is the soil humidity sensor. Yes, with each outlet, there is also connection point for the external humidity sensor. You put that sensor inside the pot, you hook it up to device and then you match each of the outlets with each of the sensors. And fifth is the app. And the app is really good. Why is it good? Well, let's look at the app. When you first start the device, it will be blinking blue and red light. That means that it needs some kind of a connection or it needs to be configured. And you do that via the mobile app. When you start the app, after accepting the information on screen, you will be presented with the screen to select if you want to have direct or indirect connection. Direct means that the app will connect or mobile phone will connect the device directly with the access point on the device. That's great if, for example, the device is out of range somewhere or you do not have Wi-Fi network. Indirect connection or Wi-Fi connection means that you have to first set up Wi-Fi on the device and you do that by entering the SSID and the password for device then you need to change and connect to the access point of the grow cube which is very easy because you will see access point name grow cube underscore and then random letters and numbers connect to it enter eight times eight which is the password not 64 but 88888888 and now the app will transfer the ssid credentials of your wi-fi network if everything is connected in the next step the device will pop up with the screen where you can set things up and this is where the fun part starts. Because, no, it's not a simple app. You say, water this plant every day for 30 seconds at 9 p.m. No, you can configure each plant on each sensor and based on the characteristics of the plants in the database, and there are around 3,000 plants in the database, it will pull the data for that plant and it will water it according to watering needs. So you can have plants that require more water, less water, humid soil, dry soil, sand, whatever, and the app, based on the plant, what is inside the pot, will know how often it needs to water it. You can then select smart watering, which I really do recommend, or you can select scheduled watering. Smart watering means that the app will look at the humidity level of the soil, and based on that, it will start watering. And there is even a smarter feature of that app, that is to avoid daylight or when the sun is above the horizon. Meaning, even if the water level drops, it will not try to water the plant until the sun goes down, so that you don't burn your plants. 
for all of you that do not want to go that route, of course, you can schedule the standard watering. That means that each night, day or whatever you specify, you can start the watering and then water for how many seconds you want to do it. And third option, of course, is the manual watering. You just click on the manual button in the app and it will start watering the plant. Even if I would end the video here, this would already, in my opinion, be perfect app and the product for up to four plants. But we didn't even scratch the surface, or actually we did scratch the surface. But here we are also interested in how it works with Home Assistant. I've already mentioned it, but once again, Johnny Bagdell has created this awesome GitHub repository where you can find this awesome Hex component or Hex integration. As far as I know, at the time of the recording of this video, this component is still not available directly through HSCS, but you can add it as a custom repository. And while you're already there, if you decide to buy this product, I would definitely suggest, especially if you're using Home Assistant, to install it. And before you install it, don't forget to give it a star, because it means a lot to authors, that way they know that people are using their components. Of course, you can support them, but at least give them a star. What does this custom component do? Actually, it does almost everything that the app does. At this point, still no, Hex integration doesn't have database of the plants, but there are other ways on how to hook up everything and get information about plants in Home Assistant, but that's a topic for another video, and if you would be interested in that one, drop me a line so I can record that one. So, as I said, what this integration does. It takes full control of the device, same control that would be available through the app. Unfortunately, you still need the app, at least for the Wi-Fi part, to configure Wi-Fi connection. After you've set up the Wi-Fi connection and the device is hooked up to your network, the app is actually not needed anymore. Everything can be done directly from Home Assistant. So let's proceed with the installation. First things first, you need to scroll down and either click on Open Hacks repository or copy the full URL, go to Home Assistant, Inside Hacks, Click on Integrations, for example, three dots, Custom Repositories, paste here the URL we just copied, select Integration as Category and click on Add. That will add this custom repository directly to HSCS and that means that now we can press on Explore and Download Repositories, type in Grow for Grow Cube, select it and press Download. At the time of the recording, the latest version is version 1.0.0. Remember, this is Hex integration, and that means that we will need to restart our Home Assistant. After Home Assistant has restarted, go to Integrations, click on Add Integration, search for brand name called Grow, select Elecro Grow Cube. You will be presented with a configuration window where you have to enter the IP address of this device. I cannot help you with the IP address of your device, but in my case, this device is called ESP Dash and then random letters and numbers. Type in that IP address in the form, click on Submit, and the device should be added. It will take a bit, it can be either from a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes for all data to get populated. But when it is populated, here is what you can get inside Home Assistant. First, we have controls for each of the four outlets, plant A, plant B, plant C, plant D. Of course, you can rename them to the name of the plant that is in each individual pot. If you press this button, the pump will start to work and it will work for 5 seconds. Remember that, each press is 5 seconds. And that is equivalent to the manual control inside the app. Then we have sensors. Some were hidden, those pumps here were hidden or not enabled, but I enabled everything, because this allows me to see if the pump was running or not. From the sensors we have humidity, this is the air humidity, temperature measured by the device, we mentioned the state of the pump and also for each individual pot or flower we have information about the moisture of the ground. There are also a lot of diagnostics. First we have information if the device is locked or not. Then for each of the outlets and also each of the sensors we have information is the outlet blocked or locked. Blocked means for example the pipe is twisted and the water cannot run and locked means that something is going on and the pump cannot work. And for the sensors, for each one we have disconnect, is it connected or not, and if there is a fault or not. In my case, sensor B has a fault. 
And then also we have water warning. Water warning means no more water in the water tank. Even with this data here, you would be able to create some smart schedules yourself. For example, you can detect when the moisture for this plant falls under 15-20% and based on that trigger this pump here. But we are still not done with the integration. There are even more fantastic things. So let's check them out. Johnny has really done it and we also have four services that we can use. The simplest one is water plant. For example, we select device from the drop-down list. We then select what plant or pot we want to water, for example C, how many seconds and plant C will be watered for 5 seconds. And then you can create schedule. In this case, this means that every 3 hours it will water that plant for 6 seconds. Of course, then you just press call service and you can repeat it for each and every plant. Create a different schedule for plant A, plant B, plant C or plant D. But even this is not all that you can do. If we select smart watering, then we have the same functionality from the smart app. In this case, once again, we would select a device, channel A. Here you can select if you want to allow watering all day, or if you disable it, it will only water during the night, or it will not water during the day. Then you set up the minimum moisture for that specific plant, for example, 24%, and maximum moisture of, for example, 65%. Call service, and from now on, the device itself will know that for the plant A or the outlet A, it will need to keep the moisture level above 24%, but never go above 65%. And no, it will not water during the day, so to avoid burning of the plants. Okay, but you've set up everything and something went wrong. We still have additional service. This time the service call is called Alecro Grow Cube Delete Watering. Select device from the list, select channel and just click call service and it will delete any predefined smart or scheduled watering. As I said, the integration that's been made by Johnny can give you almost the same look and feel, well actually not the look, but the feel as the app itself. No, currently it doesn't have plant database. And I do not think that Johnny will be creating plant database, but there are other ways on how you can hook up everything. And by the way, I will be posting here a link how you can create a plant sensor. Plant sensor is a YAML based sensor that pulls data from various sensors. For example, in our case here, it can pull value from the soil, soil moisture, pull the temperature from the device, pull humidity from the device, and that's it. Based on that, it can create sensor and you can preset values in it. For example, minimum, maximum humidity, minimum and maximum temperature, etc, etc. And in that case, you can create alarm based on the plant sensor values. So yes, you can even expand on all of the data that is available from this device. So far, I created a couple of videos in regard to plants in your apartment. My first one was in regard to the LilyGo, TTGo, Hygro boards. These are the DIY boards that you can print case, program with Arduino or ESP Home, and then use those sensors for home assistance. They are okay, but I wouldn't recommend them anymore. I also did video on the Zigbee sensors I myself am currently transitioning to that allow you to monitor the state of the soil, but they lack some data that was available with the Elcro board. Then also I created a video on DIY water pump, Zigbee water pump, that you can then hook up to your home assistant and based on the sensor data inside home assistant or plant sensors inside the home assistant, you can create automations to automatically water your plants. And yes, it also works with four channels, but that's a DIY project where you need to order PCBs, SMD components, solder everything, program everything. It's not that easy. In my opinion, this is awesome product that will replace any need to DIY anything. In regards to price tag, price of around $120, in my opinion once again, for this type of device with capabilities that it has, sensors, pumps and everything, it's really, really good price. Sure, probably you can find cheaper devices for $40, $50 on the AliExpress, but I really do not believe that the quality of build of those devices is au pair with this one. And with this device, you get everything you need to set up your watering. Every hose, 
every clamp, every diffuser, everything is already included. And I did mention the four pods, but you can also water more. You need to buy nozzles for more, but all the connectors, T connectors, Y connectors, splitters, etc., etc., is already included inside the kit. So, should you buy this device? I cannot answer and I never will answer that question for you. That's one question you have to answer on your own. But if you are looking for a simple device that can help you with your herbal or flower garden inside your home, this device should really be considered. The link to this device, the documentation, GitHub repository from Johnny and everything as always will be down in the video description. If you have any kind of comment, question, suggestion or idea for future videos, you can always pop it down in the comment section below. And by the way, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did like it and if you did enjoy it. That way YouTube will see that this is a good video and will recommend it to the others. And before I end up the video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, shared or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.